So we just took our test on chapter 6, probability, and now we move on to chapter 7, which is more probability. In this chapter, we'll begin with talking about what a random variable is. A random variable is a variable whose value is a numerical outcome of a random phenomenon. So let's say we toss four coins. The outcomes are a string of heads and tails. Each coin can either be head or tail, and those vary each time I flip four coins. Okay, so we're going to start off by giving this a numerical outcome. So let's say we wanted to look at the number of heads in the four tosses, and we will let x equal the number of heads. So if the outcome is head, tail, tail, head, all right, down here, then x equals 2. The possible values of x are 0 for no heads, 1 for 1 head, 2, 3, 4, etc. And again, one thing that we've talked about is there's a bunch of different ways that this can happen. The first, it could have been, you know, head, I'm sorry, tail, head, tail, head. It could have been he, uh, tail, head, head, tail. All right, so we get into that kind of periodically, but that should be kind of a refresher over something we talked about in the last chapter. X is a random variable because its values vary when the coin tossing is repeated. So again, it's, it's, it's random. All right. Now, the first, or the next thing that we talk about is discrete random variable. A discrete random variable X has a countable number of possible values. The probability distribution of X lists the values and their probabilities. Okay, so this little table here is called a probability distribution. So that's something we'll be talking about. This here, all right, is called a probability distribution. It's a little table that kind of helps us visualize what's going on. Now, it's going to look confusing with no numbers in it. This is kind of the general format. Uh, basically, across the top here, you've got the values of x, all right, the first value of x, the second value of x, the third value of x, all the way up into the kth value of x. That just basically says that that could go on forever, technically, but in this case, it will stop. And then across the bottom, we'll have the probabilities, the matching probabilities. So this is the probability of the first x, the probability of the second x, probability of the third, etc. Okay, there's two requirements that must be true uh, in, in these discrete random probability distributions. Every probability, P sub I, is a number between 0 and 1. Okay, that's a reoccurring fact. We should already know that. And all of the probabilities should add up to 1. So if I add these all together, they should add up to 1. Again, that's, some, that's a review of the last chapter. We already know this. Okay, so we'll walk through one example. And that'll pretty much be it. All right. So let's say that I choose an American household at random. And let the random variable X be the number of cars, including SUVs and light trucks that they own. So we'll just kind of group all vehicles into that category. Here's a probability model. And we'll ignore the few households that own more than five cars. So again, this is the same as this. It just has numbers in it, which makes it a lot easier to understand. So, uh, here we have the number of cars. Z a household could have no cars, one car, two, three, four, five. The probability that they have no cars, one, two, three, and you can kind of see these probabilities trail off. This is low, too. The probability of not having a car is low, and then it jumps up for one and two, and then it starts to trail off again. Okay, so we will do go walk through these problems, and that'll be it. Verify that the sum of all probabilities of 1. Okay, so we're basically going to add 0.09 plus 0.36 plus 0.35 plus 0.13 plus 0.05 plus 0.02 and get 1. So that works out. Okay, find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1 and express in words. So one thing that makes this chapter a little tricky is you're going to start to get into these inequality symbols again. And that's something that we may need some practice with. So x is greater than or equal to 1. So it's 1 and everything greater. So I'm basically going to add 0.36 plus 0.35 plus 0.13 plus 0.05 plus 0.02 and get 0.91. Now, some of you are thinking there was a much easier way for me to do that. I could have just subtracted 0.09 from 0.36 from 0.35 from 0.35 from 0.03 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 from 0.
from 1 and got the same point, 9, 1. And again, what that means in words is that the probability of x is greater than or equal to 1. I can also say that uh, the number of cars, what's the probability that a house has at least one car? Okay, so that's one or more. All right, next question. Find the probability that a house has less than three cars. Now, less than is not less than or equal to. It does not include three. So basically, I'm looking for less than three. So it's all of this area. So I'm going to add 0.09 plus 0.36 plus 0.35 and get 0 0.80. All right, and just for some practice with this, that's the probability that X is less than three. Okay, less than three cars. All right, uh, last one, find the probability that a house has more than four cars. So that's the probability that X is greater than four. Again, not including four, and that's where it gets a little tricky. So more than four, not including four. So if I look at my chart, I'm looking for the probability of x being over 4. So I'm not including 4, so that's going to be basically just 5. So that's going to be the probability of a house having 5 cars, and that's 0.02. Signing out.